of confinement must not involve the wanton and unnecessary infliction of pain, nor may they be grossly disproportionate to the severity of the crime. But conditions that cannot be said to be cruel and unusual under contemporary standards are not unconstitutional. Once I arrived at the delivery room, the labor room, I was shackled, my feet were shackled to the bed, the metal post of the bed, and my hand was shackled to the IV rail. I asked for the chains to be removed, I asked for a pain medicine, and I even asked, my pains were so tremendously, I asked for a, a cesarean. I didn't have any pain medicine. The only thing I was given was two Tylenol. The case of Estelle versus Gamble, the inmate at Texas Department of Corrections injured his back while doing prison work and argued that he didn't receive the medical care he needed. The Supreme Court ruled that simply denying care isn't a violation of the Eighth Amendment. The prison has to have purposely inflicted pain on the inmate by deliberately denied medical care for it to be a violation. Oh God, okay, the county I sat there for almost a year in 24 hour lockdown. It's just like a room, just a room. You don't have anything in there but your bed, your window that you can't even open, so you don't even get air. You feel like an animal. Then the room that's in, like it's a big window so everyone can see you. January 26, 2013, 400 people across California gathered up and protested against discrimination and unconstitutional crowding in women's prisons. But if you're here to support the woman inside, the woman suffering, being tortured by, these, by their captors that don't recognize humanity, please join us and stay.